This is Scott Patton, and joining us as usual is Martin Patella. Congratulations, you're now on day three. Day two was the carb challenge, so uh, hopefully you were able to record what was going on, journal how you felt, and now it's actually going to be a very easy challenge. <laughs> I know, we're trying to trick you. It's the rest challenge. So, Martin, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, are we going to sleep all day, or, wh or what are we going to do? <laughs> yes. What, what we want to do is show you what happens when you do nothing, or better, when you eat nothing. The point is this. We want to find out whether when you wake up, you're in the acidic territory or in the alkaline territory. And then when you, when you don't eat, what happens to you? Whether you drift further out into alkalinity or not, or whether you drift further out into acidity or not. So you, we want you to drink water, but not fruit juice and not coffee, just water. And let's see how long you can do that. Like if you get up at seven, try to last until noon. If you can go longer, great. But if by that time you've just hit enough, then by all means, eat food. Okay, so if I wake up in the morning and I don't eat, I, so I get up at 7, I shower, I shave, I do all my stuff, and I head off to work, and I'm turning more and more alkaline, which is probably the case with me personally, what sort of behaviors would I be seeing? So the drift from normal into alkalinity is that first you procrastinate, then you become uh, indecisive then despondent, then sleepy and unmotivated, and you actually won't want to get out of bed. And uh, at extremes, you start feeling depressed. So please don't make it or don't allow it to get awful. Right. We're not here to, to make life worse. We're here to just see where we go. Once we know we're going in that direction, we want to stop because we don't want to go too alkaline. We don't want to go too acidic. So that's the second question I had for you, Martin, is, okay, I wake up. I'm doing this. It's three or four hours later. I'm more acidic. What sort of behaviors would I be seeing? Okay, so if you drift into acidity, the first thing that happens is you lose patience. Then you lose your social graces. Your politeness goes out the window. And then... Uh, then you become short-tempered, and then you start picking fights with people. And if, if you let it go too far, you get into a straight-out road rage. Like, you will be screaming at somebody for dropping a pin on the floor. Okay, so we don't want to go that far, right? So if no, you yes. You're getting more and more irritable. You're getting more and more acidic. Great. Make a note of that. And that's what the rest challenge is all about. Which way do you trend and which way do you go? Because all this has an impact on your body and also how you can heal the inflammation or the fibromyalgia. And I want to tie it back into your day two because on day two you did a carbo challenge that hopefully taught you something about yourself. Loading with carbs either made you more acidic or more alkaline. One or the other. That's right. how it works. So if you learned your lesson, you know what happened. So now you can take the antidote knowing that if you're too acidic and carbs made you more acidic, don't eat that. Go for the opposite, which is the, star, uh, which is the proteins and fats. On the other hand, if you found out that carbs are relaxing, sedating, and making you more peaceful, and you're finding yourself crabby and confrontational, then that's exactly what you need to do. Take carbs. Right. So I was just thinking about this as you were talking. And like, So it's now 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'm getting ready to go to bed. And if I know that if I eat carbs, I'm more acidic, I'm probably going to have a harder time going to sleep. If I know if I have carbs and it makes me alkaline, that would probably be, and, I'm, and I happen to want to have a late night snack, it's a whole other story, but if, if I, if I want to have a good night's sleep and, it, and carbs make me alkaline, 
then I can have a little bit of carbs before I go to bed or an hour before I go to bed, and that's going to put me into a, like, oh, yeah, I am kind of like... Uh, the famous nightcap. The Not that I advocate drinking alcohol, but for the people who are autonomic dominant, the ones that are alkalized by starches, by carbohydrates, a drink works. What also works is a sweet dessert, a banana, an apple, a glass of juice, anything that's starchy. Right. What doesn't work, what wakes you right up, is a salad and steak. That's not the food you eat if you want to go to sleep. That's the food you eat if you want to go to town and party up. Right. If you're that type, if you're the other type. Right. Right. So let me just butt in here with alcohol. I don't know if you are or are not. If you're on the fibromyalgia crowd, you probably can't handle alcohol. But just to fit it in here, there are these two types. The people who essentially first become very emotional and then they spill everything about themselves and then they fall asleep, those are the ones that are alkalized by starches. On the other hand, the ones that become louder and more in your face and then if they continue drinking, they actually start picking a fight with one another, those are the ones that get acidified by carbohydrates. Right. Yeah, I'm the type that if I have two or three beer, I'm just like mellow as mellow can be. Yeah, you're done for the day. I'm done for the day. And it used to drive uh, one lady that I dated crazy because she'd have two or three drinks and she would go all night, right? And yeah. her friend says, like, what's the problem with him? Like, he had two drinks and he's just so quiet. And we're all like, blah, blah. you know, there was just like, and I never realized until like right now, it alkalizes me, puts me to sleep, it, it acidified her and just made her go crazy. Right, and your antidote would have been high-protein, high-fat food that would have kicked you out of that stupor. Yeah, have the, have the steak and... Uh, and a salad. And a salad, it would be good. Awesome. Okay, so that's day three. It's the rest challenge. How long... Can, and it's not how long can you go, but how long can you go till you notice whether you're getting more acidic or you're getting more alkaline. Yes. And that's the whole point of this particular day. This is well put. Don't torture yourself. Just enough to get clear. That's all we need. Yeah. So below us, we've got some places for you to put your Facebook comments. We'll have some comments there for you as well and maybe some links to some stuff that we think is um, can help with this particular challenge. Uh, but we really want to know how it's going, what you're doing, so make sure you put a comment down there as you as you go through this process, and also make sure that you journal about what's going on, because it's really important at the end of the week to be able to look at each day and say, okay, I was feeling a little more pain, I was feeling a little less pain, I had more energy, I had less energy, I was a complete nutcase and just running up the walls and driving everybody around me crazy on this day, and all that stuff, because that self-awareness will really help you make huge strides in getting over this whole syndrome that we're talking about. Tomorrow yes. is day four, and it's the white food challenge. It's going to be a good one. So we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Make sure you leave some comments down there below as you go through the process. 